Welcome to Twiglet, where Bella is narrating over a deer and moving from Phoenix to a wet place for reasons to live with her father, because her parents are divorced and stuff, who parks on mud, or his floorboards must be muddy as fuck. Then Chief Navajo Wheels comes over with Team Jacob and a gift to this truck, alright, and she gives a sick reaction. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Acting. Yes. She goes to high school over there and immediately is greeted by this guy like, Hi, I'm Asian. Wanna taste my 3 centimeter defeater? No. Then she girly hits this ball into this guy's head and he's like, Hi, I'm not Asian. Wanna taste my 4 centimeter defeater? No. Hi, I'm a dumb bitch that clearly has a thing for this dumb bitch. Oh, insane. Couldn't tell. Then they go eat and... My girl. <laughs> Why does everybody want to bang Bella? And how is she okay with this? Isn't this like borderline sexual harassment? Maybe it's because she's new and they never get new people, so that might be a reason. But most importantly, why the fuck do you have a flag of North Korea hung up there? What, you ran out of country so you picked the one that hates you the most? Fucking dipshits. Anyway, while they were busy talking about dicks, in walks the incest gang. But not really because they're all adopted. The gray area, baby. And the only one that isn't doing the fuckery buckery is Edward. Probably because they ran out of attractive kids to adopt from the orphanage. Next, they get chemistry class. Or biology class. I don't know, I'm stupid. And she sits right next to him, but he can't take her smell. She'd be like, damn, a shower though. Did you use a skunk as a loofah, you dumb hoe? He can't stand her smell and gives her the rape eyes for an uncomfortably long time. Like, This shot's fucking weird, man. Anyway, class ends and he's immediately out of there. And over to switch classes at student affairs slash counseling. No idea what it's actually called. Like this area where you switch to classes and stuff. Doesn't matter. Because it turns out he can't do that. And Bella shows up and he's just like, fuck this fucking smelly slut. Then she leaves too. Why were you even there then, cunt? Ain't no way you saw where he went because he left so fast. You still pack it up and shit. So were you there to switch classes too? Was your anger of the situation really going to deter you from doing what you came here to do? What a dumb broad. Anyway, she eats at a diner with her dad. And it only took me 13 years to realize that this guy finding bald over here. The same guy that dies in the boat later on. Yeah, spoilers. Sorry, f Anywho, she plans to confront Shovelface the next day, but he never shows. Only his family does. Also, this door opens in this shot, but in the next one, it's closed again. Small thing, I know, but it pisses me off, so screw you. He then proceeds to not show up for a bunch of more days. Then we cut to a guy getting killed. Then we cut back to school. Shovelface is finally there, and he starts to chat with her. And you know, I really thought I'd rewatch this movie and realize that the claims of her not having any facial expressions are a bit too over exaggerated. But no, make a different fucking face, bitch. They continue to talking into the hall and she asks him why his eyes changed color from the last time and he runs out of bullshit answers to say like fluorescence uh uh uh, uh, uh chlamydia uh it's uh meh. Then in the parking lot, they go into their automobiles, and the sexual harasser almost commits vehicular manslaughter on Bella, but Ed stops it and leaves. She meets his pale as fuck dad in the hospital for a checkup, and she's like, Edward, stop the car, it was amazing, came out of nowhere to save me. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was cool, I'm gonna kill that fucking guy. Then she talks to Edward, who's also there, like, you were across the parking lot. You were, like, super fast. Nah, nah. You stopped the van. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I did not. You stupid! Then he's like, Well, nobody's gonna believe you. Okay, so here's the thing, cabron. You fucking went in with super speed, but you stayed without super speed so she could see you, and you didn't leave with super speed either. So everybody should have seen you, but they're not. Your lucky fucking movie convenience has them all blind to you at that point. So fuck you, dude. You retarded. Also, no one ever seems to question the weirdness of this incident, but whatever. Let's keep going. Next, they go on a field trip, and Bella keeps denying them. Nibbles asking her to prowl and successfully setting them up with other girls throughout the movie, and. I'm gonna make a steaming cup of compost tea. Okay? <laughs> don't drink it! Then don't put it in a mug and call it tea, you bent idiot. Anyway, Edward is like, we should not be friends. But then at the cafeteria, he plays keepy up, he's with an apple, and he's like, we should be friends. Bitch, you confuse him. Just saying, if you were smart, you'd stay away from me. Like, what if I'm not the hero? What if I'm Billy Eyelash? What the fuck? So she invites him to the beach with her friends. He says no. What is this flag? I don't know. Someone please tell me. At the beach, the dumb bitch asks the nerd to help her do herself up. No, 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 no. At the beach, the dumb bitch asked the nerd to help her do her. <laughs> Fuck. At the beach, the dumb bitch asked the nerd to help her do her. I cannot say the word. I cannot fucking. Do okay. At the beach, the dumb bitch asked the nerd to do her up, although she clearly did herself up just a second ago. Fucking stupid cunt. A few quiet lads tribe come along with Jacob, and he tells her that Edward's family, the Cullens, is part of an enemy clan, and they made a deal with the quiet lads tribe to say off the res, and this beach is part of the res. I forgot what res is short for. Resurrection, resolute, residence, risotto. Fuck. I'll remember it eventually. Anyway, we now cut to finding Baldo and him dying in a boat. He gets killed by.
killed by three vampires, I right? Budget Thor, Will I Am, and Bitch from Brave. Then later on, the sun's out, but the Cullen's in. So the ladies go to buy dresses for prom, or yeah, prom. And Bella tags along only to buy a book for research purposes. Then a bunch of pervs gang up on her, only for Ed to show up and scare them off using his rape eyes. Then he takes her back to the girls who were like, Oh my god, where were you? We were so worried, but we got more hungry than worried, so. Oh my god, it's Edward! Why are they so surprised by his presence? His car is right there, and I'm pretty sure you couldn't hide behind anything on that side, so. I just, oh, I fucking don't. I don't even. I'm not even. So Bella go to eat some food while the bitches leave. That's what I'm gonna refer to them as from now on. Fuck it, Bella. They eat, and she demands answers, and he says, quote, he feels very protective of her, end quote. Yeah, not creepy at all, Bells. Green flags, green flags all around, bitch. He also tells her that he can read the minds of all the people in this room except for hers, and that's annoying him a bit, I guess. And on the drive home, she finds out that his skin is called F, and they both see their father's vehicles at the police department very late, so he turns left to go right and stop by and see what's up. Why is it so difficult to get fucking simple directions right? Whatever, doesn't matter. Turns out they found out about Baldo's death. They think it was an animal attack. Carlisle also thinks so too. Dad is sad. She gives daughter pepper spray and it's about time, really. They go home and she does montage of fight research. Strength, power, speed, daft punk. And when she goes to school, she sees Ed and walks into the woods and he just knows to follow her. No mind reading required. We get the most cringy scenes of the movie with the weirdest camera angles. She finally confirms he's a vampire. Then he takes her on a really fast piggyback ride where she does not get whiplash. He goes into the sunlight like, This is what I am. The skin of the killer bell. Okay, you can't show yourself in the sun because you'll sparkle and people will tell that you're a vampire. Okay, cool. But I'm sure there's some sort of cream for that, dude. Like, sunscreen, maybe. Makeup, even. Like, that would work, right? Anyway, more cringy shit happens. I could kill you. You should stay away from me. I trust you. Don't. You scent is so strong. I'm not afraid. You know, that stuff. So now they're a retarded couple laying in grass, tapping ass, and everybody can't believe that they're a thing, okay? And he tells her that Carlisle turned him into a vampire in 1918 because he was dying. And his wife, and it's really hard to stop sucking once you start because sticks too good man i mean tastes too good man but carlisle he made a sturdy stuff and he could stop sucking they also don't want to be monsters so they only feast on animal blood another thing is each one of them has different powers or abilities or strengths all right he's like super fast more faster than other people and can read minds and his sister can see the future or something like that i'm guessing he didn't dish out all this information in one go because their clothes changed it was raining in one bit then it changed back to the old clothes and no rain so did he just cut this in bits why did he leave some stuff out why did he do the item why is this pissing me off this fucking movie Movie, man. Whatever. He invites her to his house to meet his family. We got weird, new, angry, Chad, mom, and dad. That rhymed. Booyah. He takes her up to his room with no bed because he doesn't sleep. And then they go climbing trees. And out of all the lines he could have chose, my guy Robert unironically chose. Hold on tight, spider monkey. And now I know where I got her from. So they jump across trees and her face stays the fucking same. Some piano shit happens. Then we cut to police looking for the quote animals. But they find out they are not animals. And the citizens of Spike Utensil are concerned. So dad is like, chill, mother. Focus. And that night, Ed sneaks into Bella's room, interrupting her mom phone call. They get down to Schmexen, and she reaches for his dick, and he's like, Oh, my pee pee. He goes, Stop it. How did her dad not hear him smack into the wall like that? That was pretty loud. Whatever. I'm stronger than I thought. And back to Schmex. Next day, Bella wants her dad to meet Edward, and this is the best scene in the movie. You know why? Because these two beer cans complete each other's logos. Best scene, best scene in this gay ass movie, hands down. They mean he takes her to play some baseball with his family while a thunderstorm roars above, which covers the sound of the thunderous claps of the baseball's booty cheeks while they play because they're very strong and shit. And she's supposed to go umpire this game, all right? A few things on this though. Are these bats and baseball reinforced? Because if they have, as if you can fight me off, yeah, strength, then this baseball equipment should be exploding on contact. And how exactly is she supposed to umpire shit when they have super speed that her tiny mortal brain can barely comprehend or process? You're ruining baseball to while fuck you. Whatever, they play a bit and weird girl senses that the bad vamps are closing in on their location. So uh, Bella try to leave, but Carlisle's like, no, it's too late. Why? Why, dickhead? It's, uh, it's not too late. Why is it too late? If they ask why they left, which they probably won't, just say they left to get their pubes waxed in town or some shit. Like, they can leave. Doesn't matter. They try to hide her as best they can, but her stench is too pungent and they all go into attack stance. But the cock and ball trio decide to leave because they're outnumbered. And while Bella try to leave themselves in a vehicle, he tells her that Thor is a tracker and he read his mind and he found out that he will never let this go. He'll hunt her till death and he will never stop. So they have to kill Thor by ripping him apart and burning the pieces. Then they go to her home and she pretends to break up with him to fool her dad into believing she's so sad she's gonna drive back home right this second. And to keep him away from her and safe from Thor, she does him dirty and tells him the same thing her mom told him when she left him. Big oof. 
emotional damn it but he isn't safe now is he because technically speaking you being the offspring of both your parents all thor needs to get your super delicious blood is to get both your parents blood and make a cocktail out of them hence neither of them are safe that's how blood taste science works right yeah right no okay so the ruse works because thor used super hearing and could tell what happened Bellad and some backup make it to his place where will i am is to bow out of this fucking fight like bruh look i'm out fuck these white people but take care budget thor he hunt good and bitch i'm brave she's a cunt peace out whiter people great so they come up with a plan you and weird will drive Bella away to some fucking place phoenix i think while another group of them break off to try and throw thor off the trail using bella's clothes and uh, i guess another group tries to protect the dad but then weird girl goes full on that so raven gets visions of thor not being fooled by their trickery and she relays that message i think to the rest of them and she also sees a vision of a ballet studio and after that budget thor somehow gets hold of bella's number and calls her with her mom's voice on the phone call he got her hostage and he tells her to come to her old ballet studio alone if she wants to have her birth cover stay alive so she sneaky breakies out of the hotel to do so she meets him and finds out that her mom's not there it was just a recording of her blowing ass at ballet and he used that to lure her here now he's gonna use that same camcorder to film them and make uh, america's funniest home videos submission so she uses her secret weapon go go pepper spray but that is super ineffective against the super vampire though and he throws her around and breaks her leg but i don't know where edward comes out and tackles him so he got there first because he's much faster than the rest they fight a bit and he tries to get away with bella and fails idiot you know he's just gonna attempt and succeed at stopping you so why'd you would never move a person with a broken bone man you'll just end up fucking up nerves and shit permanently dumbass and now she has been thrown through a mirror and he has a chance to bite her splendid job you twat whatever they fight some more than the the rest of the clones arrive to take it from there, start a fire and dismember him, throw him in there to kill him, while Carlisle tells Ed that he has to suck the venom out of the wound to stop her from changing because she's currently orgasming her way into bloodsucker status. And he's like, you know I won't be able to stop. So Carlisle's like, then find the will to stop. Here's a thought, why don't you do it, Dr. Dipshit? To my knowledge, you've done it at least twice before and succeeded, thereby making you the prime candidate for this dickhead. Also, how the gay choir vampire shit did they contain this fire? How is this place not burning down? And why are they still taunting in circles in vampire attack stands? So dudes in pieces in a pit of fire, I'm pretty sure you have the upper hand here. Also, why do you even have an attack stance? Is it more optimal for biting or something? Well, I don't care anymore, bro. Let's just end this shit. He just starts sucking on her, moves the venom and then some, and next thing she knows, she finds herself in a hospital, having lost a lot of blood. Her mom's there, and she has a story of falling down a flight of stairs through a window. Apparently, that window also bit her. I don't know how her mom and the hospital he's in believe the story, but Carl is a doctor. Maybe he pulled some strings, called some people, covered some wounds, fabricated some charts, etica, whatever, who cares? She heals up a bit enough to go to prom with Shovel Face, and Wolf Boy shows up before that to tell her that his dad told him to tell her to stay away from Edward and she's like damn I kind of don't care they do prom dance and shit and she asks him to turn her into a vampire and he hits her with a fadeaway psych like nah uh uh while bitch from bridge watches on from a window and that's it this movie gets 10 pieces of corn out of one massive turd